We'd like to thank our friends at Bridgestone Tires for sponsoring our Aaron series with Saints Legends. Now, let's go back to that super season. Yeah, during that super run, there were super saints that stood out in every facet of the game. Of course, Drew Brees on offense, Tracy Porter making all kinds of plays on defense. But what about those special teamers back in the day? Yeah, Garrett Hartley, he stood out. Mike, how you doing, man? I'm good, how are you? Good, it's been a while. It sure has. Hey, let's go knock out some errands, yeah? Absolutely. After masking up, we hit the road with former Saints kicker Garrett Hartley, whose errands included finding the right gift at the pet store for his dog and gearing up at this outdoorsman's favorite sporting goods stop. Hey, nobody's perfect except for Hartley in the postseason. He was 3 for 3 in the Super Bowl and how about 8 for 8 overall in the playoffs. But first, oh, let's reminisce on the kick that Hartley will forever be famous for. A lot of kickers are defined by a kick. Sometimes it's not a good kick. You're defined by a great kick. Do you get asked about that kick almost every day? Uh, a lot of people, they're like, you know, the biggest ones is, you know, how are you feeling? Were you nervous? And you're like, no, I wasn't nervous. Heck yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously I don't think I, I thought about the actual, how powerful that was, not just for the team, but for the city of New Orleans. And it really took a couple weeks, even after the Super Bowl, for that to start sinking in. No matter what you do the rest of your life, you have that part of history. Not many people can say that. Not many people have that kind of moment they can lean on like you have. <laughs> it was such an important aspect of my life and you know, being around those guys. And Joe, Fitt, Joe Vitt said it the best, you know, that uh, that group of guys will walk together forever. I always think about this when an athlete makes a defining play in a city that really contributes to their first championship. They'll never have to buy a beer in that city the rest of their life. <laughs> How many times have people bought you a beer or a drink? Oh, you made that kick. No problem, Garrett Hartley. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. It definitely, it, it happens. And then, uh, you know, when they when they say things like that, obviously maybe I'll let them buy the first one, and then I'll, I'll return the favor and buy them one or two more, and just say thank you uh, because the fans is really what made it so special. Let's let's be honest. I don't look like a football player. It, it was definitely. Uh, crazy getting you know noticed sometimes. On our first errand, you have a beautiful dog and we're gonna reward your dog in this first errand. Yeah, you know, just gotta give, you know, a little, a little bit of love, you know. He's one of my, like, my best friend, you know, he's like my child, so to speak. He's, uh, I've had him since he was a puppy. He's a British black lab. What's his name? Gunner. All right, let's go help Gunner. Let's go get him something here. Time All to right. get him picked up. All right, let's do it. Do you have any idea what you're gonna get your dog? No idea. Honestly, this is kind of just like a, a we're, we just go in there and just start throwing stuff in the basket and say, you know, let him pick out what he wants. That's what this segment's all about. Let's, <laughs> let's give it a shot here. So you love your dog, but you, you ever think about another pet? I mean, as long as it's not a cat, I'm good. I, I've been kind of thinking about some fish here and there. Really? Well, let me ask you this. If you had to name a fish after a kicker, would you name it Carney, maybe? What would you name the fish? I Probably not Carney, maybe like Grammatica. Okay, why grammatic? Uh, they're like a little, a little Spitfire guy, a lot of energy, very talented. You know, he was pretty to look at, yeah. um, and uh, just was like really shifty. Dog grocery shopping here—is that what we're doing? Yeah, I mean, huh? this is uh, this is this is what I do on a Saturday. I don't Tasty know. biscuits? Would he, uh, would he like that? Uh, no, actually, this is his favorite. Uh, I, I don't agree with the price sticker on this thing, but the bully sticks. I mean, he oh, wow. just absolutely goes to town. So we'll get him a couple of these. Mission accomplished. We took care of the dog. What's our next day in Garrett Harley? Absolutely. We're uh, going to run over to Pugalia's right now and uh, go get some stuff for uh, duck season. He's a big outdoorsman. Let's do it. You'll always be known for the big make that you had. Is there a miss that stands out that drives you crazy? Hmm. So same Super Bowl year, mm -hmm. uh, it was Tampa Bay at home. It was a chip shot field goal. Um, I, I, I just, I rushed it and I wrapped it so hard. It was just a, a duck hook, just a screen duck hook. I was just, I was sick and... Wow. Wow. Yes, the miss hurt Hartley, but the subsequent fan letter he'll never forget was even more hurtful. I get the card, it's like a glitter Christmas tree. Maybe a couple ornaments on it, I'm not quite sure. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be nice. I open a card. Dear Mr. Hartley, I just wanna thank you for costing me $125 in my pool game for your miss. But this is where she went wrong. There's a return label 
All right. Ooh. There's a return label on the envelope. So this is what I did. I actually, I went to, uh, I forgot, I don't know, Toys R Us uh, something. And I spent $30, maybe more on a Monopoly game. Just so I could take out $125 in play money <laughs> and send it back to Beth or Karen, whatever her name was. Oh. And I just said, I'm so sorry that I cost you $125. Please remember it's just the game. Did you Except, hear back? I never heard that. Oh, you didn't hear back? I, I, that's, the, that's the only, like, the, the downfall to the story is I was hoping, like, we were going to become, like, pen pals or something. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. <laughs> we're coming up here. This is one of my favorite stops, Puglia's. Uh, I've known the owner for the last 10, 12 years. One of the best local uh, outdoor sports uh, in New Orleans. Outdoors is your passion. This is your store. Let's go check it out. Absolutely. All right. Home sweet home. I guess you know this guy here, huh? Anthony, what's up, bud? How you been, dude? It's been a while. Good to see you, man. You too. Long time. I know you own this place. This is a pretty good customer for you, huh? Oh, Garrett. Garrett's been coming here for, for years, man. Very good customer. This is the Hartley floor up yeah, here. This huh? is like a grown man in a Chuck E. Cheese. Okay, <laughs> this is like how we explain this. I like that right. analogy. So for those who don't know, you had an outdoor TV show for years. This is a real passion for you. What's your favorite part of this? Right, I mean, so everything from, you know, duck hunting to long range shooting, bow season, elk, uh, I mean, you name it. And I, I love to do it outside. It just, like you said, it's a stress relief. And, you know, kicking the ball occasionally can be a little bit stressful here and there. So uh, it was always good to get out and clear my head. And... The big question though, could you, could you kick 40 yards from this? 30? Yeah. Extra, uh, extra point, maybe? Yeah, an uh, old school extra point for sure. Okay, old school extra point. It wouldn't no. be pretty, but we could do it. No. It's, I like to have a little bit more wiggle room. So I'll put this on, it's a little bit bigger, but man, you're comfy, you're toasty. I'm like the holder, he's the kicker, you know? Let's ready, let's go do some duck hunting. <laughs> hey, we'll save that for another one. <laughs> well, thanks for teaching me a lot in there. Yeah, just a little bit, you know? Yeah. Just uh, every other day for me, so I'm glad I can broaden your horizon. Yeah, we gotta say goodbye to Chuck E. Cheese. I picked you up, I'm gonna take you home now. What's you got that? a few more stories for me though. Yeah, right? I got one or two. Okay. Head coaches treat their kickers differently. How does Sean Payton treat kickers? Well, uh, as good as my last kick. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how it is. How does it work sometimes in situations? Does he ask you input in terms of range or is it just go out there and do it? Right, no, I mean, so they're, they're asking us our input, um, you know, before the game, especially in an outdoor stadium. Wind's always a big factor, um, the field condition, whatever it might be. Is that a long conversation? Or is no, you know, it's, uh, he has a lot of other things on his plate. Yeah, so exactly. it's literally, um, right before the game or kickoffs, I'll, I'll tell him, you know, it just got to the point to where I'll walk past and I'll be like, hey, you know, I feel good, uh, you know, feel good 53 and in this way, or, you know, gotta have it 58, 60, whatever it might be going the other way with the wind, or hey, today, if we're in a, you know, bad condition, it might be, you know, 45 yards this way and maybe 50 the other, you know, just uh, depending on the conditions outside. Interesting. Well, listen, we did it all today. We helped your dog, did a little hunting prep for you. And yeah, a little prep for me. We're uh, and let you know, we're working in on that a little bit. I, I think I did a lot of work. Well, listen, <laughs> I appreciate your time, my friend. Hey, absolutely. All right, enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. Yep. This episode of Aaron's brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, the world's largest tire and rubber company. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. <laughs>